the whole, like, this assignment is a whole bunch of stuff crammed into one assignment. That is exactly why we are, um, we're taking a couple of days to do this one, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, tell me, okay, so first of all, what do you think, I'm going to pull up number one for you, and let me know, hold on, I'm going to pull up the form too, so we can see if it's just a typing issue or, you know, like through the steps. Hey guys, turn that down, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, can you see the pro problem number one okay on my screen? Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, based on what you know about factoring versus solving, do you think you're going to end up, so although it really doesn't affect your first steps, but do you think you're going to end up just factoring this or are we going to solve it by the end? I was thinking we were just going to factor. And you're right. You said in the video that solving is like when there's an equal sign. Exactly. Yeah, because if we don't have an equal sign, if we don't know what it's equal to, it's kind of impossible for us to solve it. So all we can do is just factor it. So okay. what would be the very first thing that you would ask yourself to decide how you're going to factor it? Is there a GCF? Yes, ma'am. So is there a GCF? Yeah, before. Okay. So we're going to factor. Four and N. There we go. I was hoping you might catch that. Yeah, four and then an M and an N can be factored out of all those. Exactly. So after I factor out that four M N, so what will be left over in the first term after I factor out four M N? Wouldn't it just be one? Yep. Good job. Thank you for not saying nothing because a lot of people have been saying nothing. So good. <laughs> okay. And then what's going to be in the next term? 7n to the third power and n to the third power. Yep. And last but not least? Uh, 6m n to the sixth power. So 6m and then n to the sixth. Right. All right. So then what's the next thing that you need to figure out? The next question you need to ask. Do I need to solve it? Well, um, if we were talking about, we've already decided we don't, you, you just told me we don't have to solve it because we don't have an equal sign. So we're just plain old factoring. So your first step was beautiful. You factored out a GCF. What's the next thing you need to check, like, for the leftover? What else do you need to check to see whether you're done factoring or whether there's more you can do? And if you don't remember, that is totally fine. It's been like a month. <laughs> you just tell me. Yeah, I don't really okay. remember. It is no problem. Okay, so next you're going to want to look to see if it's special. Um, so this would need to be a perfect square, and that would need to be a perfect square. Now, 1 is a perfect square because 1 times 1 is 1, but there is nothing that you can multiply by itself to get 6. So that means that it's not special. So then your next question would be checking to see if it's a quadratic trinomial. So it's a trinomial. But that first, that lead coefficient isn't quadratic. So that's going to be a negative there too. And then last but not least, you need to check and see, does it have four or more terms so that you can factor it by grouping? Do we have four or more terms here in this leftover? No, there's only three. Exactly. So you don't have a GCF. You don't have a quadratic. You don't have four more terms, and it's not special. So that means that you factored it as much as you possibly can. So let's... Okay, so we are done with that yeah, one? Yeah, so good catch there. That should be a negative seven, my bad. Oops. All right, there we go. So yeah, so I need to change that. So um, number two. So first of all, is this an expression or is it an equation? Like, do we have an equal sign in there? Um, it's an expression. Yeah, so we're not going to solve it. Um, not that that really affects what you do at first anyway. So your first question is still always the same no matter what. What's the very first question? Um, is there a GCF? Yes, and is there a GCF? Wouldn't it be three? Yeah, it is three. Yep. You've got X's in those first two terms, but... Oh, sorry, you can't see my thing on the screen. My bad. Um, there are X's in the first two terms, but you got to be able to factor it out of all three of them. So what's going to be left kind of in that, like, remainder expression after you factor out that GCF? Um, X to the second power, mm -hmm. and then... 
it'd be negative 13x mm-hmm. plus 30. Yep, perfect. All right, so now we need to check and see, is it special? So that one's a perfect square because you can do x times x to get x squared. Is there a number that you can multiply by itself twice to get 30? No. Nope. 15. No. Yeah, because it would have to be like 15 times 15. So it's got to be oh, a number yeah. by itself. So nope. So it's not special. So what's the next question you need to ask? Which is sad whether you're finished or not. Um, and if you don't remember, that's perfectly okay. Because again, it's been like a month. So if you want me yeah, to remind you. Remember. Yeah. So the next thing you need to check for is, is it a quadratic trinomial? So it's quadratic because that first term has an exponent of 2. And it has three terms, so that means it's a quadratic trinomial. So then you need to see, is a equal to 1? So what's the coefficient that's in front of that x to the second right there? The 3? The, oh, not the, not the GCF, the little, the coefficient that's like hanging out there in front of the x, we just don't really see it there. Oh, it's a positive, a plus? Yeah, so that's a 1 because whenever there's not a number in front of the x squared that we can see, remember that means that a is equal to 1? Mm -hmm. So that means that that's the easy one. It's funny, everybody's like wanting to do it the hard way, like when I've had all these meets. And um, this is actually the easiest one. So remember when you've got an x to the sec, when it's just your a is equal to 1, all you got to do is pop it open. You got those two binomials. That three still chilling out. He's kind of like the lazy friend on your couch. He's not really doing anything, but you can't forget that he's there. And the first thing you want to do is factor this x to the second power. And the only way you can factor an x to the second power is an x times an x. Turn it down, please. Sorry. <laughs> and then you're going to make that little table. And it's what do you multiply to get B, so in this case, what number is, I'm sorry, what do you multiply to get C? Which in this case, what number is C? 30. Yep. That'll C, add. It'll to, just be 30. Yes. And that'll add together to get negative 13. So give me some factors of 30. Um, 1 and 30. Mm -hmm. um, 2 and 15. Um, 3 and 5. Um, three and five? Oh, no. Three and six. Nope. I mean, five and six. <laughs> yeah, five and six. Okay. And then there's also, and there's a, there's a three in there, too, though. Three and ten. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and I was getting ready to write down the wrong thing. Okay. So, three and ten. Do any of those add up to thirteen? Yeah, 3 and the 10. Yeah. So what's really what these are going to be is it's going to be a negative 3 and a and negative, negative 10. 10. Exactly. Because a negative times a negative still gives you that positive 30 that you needed. But negative 3 plus negative 10 still adds up to that negative 13 that you needed. So because x is equal to 1, you don't have to do like AC or any of that. All you do with those is just pop them into those binomials right there. So it'll be x minus mm -hmm. 3. And x minus 10. The only thing that makes it tricky on the Google form, though, and so I'll put that in there, too, just so that you can see. Um, that's why the directions say if you have, for expressions, if you have two binomials, type the one with the smaller constant first. So number three and number four, you're going to solve both of those. Um, what's your clue that you know you're going to be able to, that you're going to have to solve both of those? The equal sign. Yeah, they got an equal sign. Exactly. Now, number three is going to be a little more basic. Um, so, when you've got it set equal to zero, first of all, you just for a minute, you pretend that equal zero isn't even there. Don't worry about it yet. Just worry about factoring the left side of the equation first. So, just we went through those questions a minute ago. So, there's not going to be a GCF because there's nothing you can factor out of all three. It's not special because 40, now x squared is a perfect square, but 48 is not. Um, it is a quadratic, and it's a trinomial, 
And the nice thing is that x is equal to 1. So this is one of the easier ones to factor. So all you're going to have to do is pop open the little empty binomials right there. To factor the x squared, you'll do an x times an x. And then you still need to do your table where it's like, what do you multiply to get c? So in this case, what do you multiply to get 48? You would add to get negative 14. Oh, that's ugly writing. Okay, so we're multiplying to get 48. Mm -hmm. Well, first it would be 1. Oh, it would be 6 and 7, right? Really close. 6 and 8. Is 48. You're thinking of 42. Okay, yeah. so is it going to be a negative or a positive 6 and an 8? They're both going to be negative. Yes, they are, because that negative times that negative will give you a positive 48 that you need, but they will also sum up to negative 14. So because A was equal to 1, all you have to do is just pop it in there, so it'll be X minus 6 x minus 8. Now, if we were only factoring it, we would be finished, but we know that we have an equation, so now we have to actually do an extra step and we have to solve. Um, so it has to be equal to 0, and so we're trying to figure out, like, because of the way multiplication works, either this has to be equal to 0 or that has to be equal to 0, because 0 times anything is going to be equal to 0. So you've got two equations that you need to solve. You've got x minus 6 is equal to 0, and you've got x minus 8 is equal to 0. So for e both of those, you're just going to add that constant to both sides. So the opposite of minus 6, of course, will be positive. positive. So your x could be 6, or your x could be a... Positive 8. Exactly. So your two solutions are 6 and positive 8. And then to type it into the Google form, because it gives pretty explicit directions for that too. So you're going to use those brackets, you know, the ones that I can't draw, the little squiggly yeah. ones. And you always put, if you have two solutions, put the smaller one first. So it'll be 6, comma, 8 in this case. And you know you did it right, because once again, it's not yelling at me, keep trying, my brain's growing. Oh, yeah. Or real quick, too, because 4, you're still solving it exactly like you just told me because it's got an equal sign in it. But there's something. There's negative 6. It's, yeah, it's set equal to negative 6 in instead of, a, and it's got to be set equal to 0. So, but really, all we have to do, though, is just get that 6 in over to the other side. So what could you do to cancel out that minus 6 in? Um, add it. Yeah, that's exactly what you're going to do. So you're going to do plus 6 in. Yeah. And then over here on the right side of the equation, obviously negative 6 and positive 6 are going to cancel. So you'll just, you'll have that 0 that you needed. What mm -hmm. you do to one side, of course, you have, you to, have do to do to the, the other. other. And this is where you need to be careful. Because I know you know you can't combine like an n to the second and an n and an 8. But make sure when you're rewriting them all as three separate terms, make sure you write them in the correct order because then it's going to throw things off. So like the 5n to the second goes first, then the 6n will come second, and then that constant always comes last because it's in standard form. So you need the biggest exponent to the smallest exponent. So now that your equation is set equal to 0, you've manipulated it, you've moved that negative 6n over to the other side, now we can kind of like ignore this zero for a second and just focus on factoring the left-hand side. So we don't have but a great- what order did we put it in? Like... Oh, so we always put the exponent, the biggest exponent first. Oh, okay. And then the number, the very, or I'm sorry, the variable that just has the exponent of one, even though we don't see the one, it's technically there. Yeah. And then the eight, the con whatever the constant is, comes third. Cause it's always like your A, your B, your C. If you don't yeah. write it in that order, then it messes things up. So you need that quadratic term in the front, and then the regular old variable, and then the constant last. Okay. And then you don't have a greatest common factor. Um, it's not special because neither 5 nor negative 8 is a perfect square. It is a quadratic trinomial because it's quadratic because of that 2 and you've got three terms. But A isn't equal to one this time. So you've, it's a more complicated method. So that's the one where you've got to use AC. 
So what number is A and what number is C? It would be 5 and then 8. Yep. And don't forget that's a negative 8. So A yeah. times C will be negative 40. Negative 40. So you've got to figure out what are the factors, what can you multiply to get negative 40 that will <laughs> add to get B. So it's almost the same as the other one. It's just that now it's what do you multiply to get negative 40. And then this one will be a little bit harder, too, because that 40 is negative, right? So that means you've yeah. got more combinations to work with. You know that one of the numbers has to be a positive and one has to be a negative. And you can, you've got a pretty good guess that, obviously, the bigger one is probably going to be the positive number because it's got to add up to a positive 6. So that's what I'm going to roll with for right now. So I'm going to say um, negative 1 times positive 40 obviously adds up to 39, so that's not going to be it. Negative 2 times 20 doesn't add up to 6. 3 won't go in there. Negative 4 times four positive seven. 10. Yeah, so there we go. There's the one we got because it'll be a negative 4 plus a positive 10. So those are the two numbers that we needed. Now, when A isn't, before, when A was equal to 1, like when there was just a 1 here instead of this 5, it was really easy because all you had to do was pop open the binomials and just put that 4 and that 10 in there. But remember, it's more complicated. This is, this is the one that's totally the most work. So I'm going to rewrite this 5n squared. Oops, that was an ugly 6. Plus 6n minus 8. And the whole reason that we had to get that negative 4 and that 10 is because now we need to use them to break apart that 6n into two pieces. So we took the 6n and we broke it up into a negative 4n plus 10n so that it's still, you know, worth 6n. We're just breaking it up into two so that now we have an expression that has four terms instead of three terms. So what would be the whole point of breaking it up into four terms instead of just three? Um, so you, so you, isn't it where like you like put them together so you could divide them? When you group them? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Uh-huh. And um, so what are we gonna factor out of the first group? Mm. Nothing, I don't know, but couldn't you switch the 10 and the 4 if you wanted to? You could switch the 10 and the 4 if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do want to stay with this for a second because I know you're thinking, I, I get what you're thinking, that you can't factor anything out of 5 and negative 4. But, end, but yeah, they both have an n. So, no, that's exactly what you're going to factor out. They both have an n that can be factored out. So you're going to do that. So you're going to factor an n out of that group. So if you factor an n out of there, what's going to be left out of the 5n squared after you factor out the n? It would be 5n minus 4. Yep. Okay, and then what are we going to factor out of this group? Um, just 1. There's something a little bit bigger. Or it's not two. much. Yeah, you can factor a 2 out of there. Exactly. So then we're going to do factor the 2, so it'll be plus 2. And then what do you have left in that binomial after you factor out the 2? 5 and minus 4. Exactly. So you know that you're probably doing it right because you have that same binomial right there. So that's a clue to yourself that, oh, good grief, after all this work, I know I'm probably doing it right. So then you take that 5 and minus 4, you factor out that common binomial. That becomes one of your binomials. And then the n plus 2... two becomes your other binomial. So we've done all this flipping work. We factored it. We finally got it factored, but we're still not done because this is an equation. So now that we factored it, we have to go back and pick up that is equal to zero component that we kind of have been ignoring. So again, because of the way multiplication works and anything times zero is zero, either this one can be equal to zero or that one can be equal to zero. So we've got two different equations that we need to solve for zero. So we've got 5n minus 4 is equal to zero. So we're just going to add 4. Divide both sides by 5. 
And you know how in algebra we like for you to just leave it as a fraction, so that's what I want yeah. you to do. So it'll just be 4 over 5 for that solution. And then the other equation would be n plus 2 is equal to 0, which means that you'll just subtract 2 from both sides. So, of course, n is equal to negative 2. So your two solutions that you're going to type into this one, let me make sure I, you know, I certainly could have screwed up too. So I'm going to type them in there to, into the form and make sure I, we did it. So we know we did it right. So you're really not doing anything that you haven't already been doing. It's that it's literally all of it. Fact, yeah, all the factoring. Yeah, well, yeah, you've been in school in a month, boo, so that makes perfect sense. So